What's up guys? It's Vivi. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk all about Ultra Miami, a little bit of Miami Music Week, but mostly just Ultra Music Festival. Um, I know it's January, but this one sneaks up really quick because it's in March. It's like the first big festival of the season. So I wanted to jump ahead on some content for you guys so you can prepare. I'm gonna be doing a similar video to like what I did for Lost Lands in the fall. And I'm gonna share with you 10 tips that I wish I knew before my first Ultra. Ultra was the first EDM festival I ever attended however many years ago. And there are definitely some things that I wish I knew before I went into it. I was definitely a newbie and I hope these tips help you if you are a first year ultra attendee. To everyone who has been asking if I'm going this year, I don't know. <laughs> it's TBD. If I do go though, it will be the same situation as last year where I'm there for work. So in case you missed my ultra content last year, uh, the company I work for was doing media coverage for Ultra, so I was there doing artist interviews. We had some Miami Music Week parties, all that good stuff. So if I am there again this year, it'll be for that. I won't be going just as an attendee, but we will see. You never know. It's undecided. The lineup is stacked this year, though. I'm super excited for you guys if you are going and i hope this advice helps you out so without further ado let's jump into it first important point is do not rely on ubers as your transportation home particularly if you are the kind of person who likes to stay for the entire festival all the way to the end it is a fucking nightmare trying to get an uber around bayfront park during the ending of the festival highly recommend using the metro system if you can it's so easy even if your hotel or Airbnb or whatever is not directly at a metro stop, just take it further out from Bayfront Park and get an Uber from there. Because again, trying to call one near the venue is impossible. If you're staying on Miami Beach, obviously that's a lot trickier, but just as a heads up, if you are staying on the beach side, be prepared to probably, you're gonna wanna leave the festival a little early in order to get an Uber because it is just, so chaotic and you're gonna be waiting for like an hour to get a car and it's just not worth it second very important point is that you should not sleep on miami music week now the first time that i went to ultra i was a little baby i was under 21 so i couldn't get into most of the parties but certain artists particularly the bass artists will have under 21 events like i know slander's after party last year was under 21 so just do your research if you're not of age, but there are just so many good shows that week and so many like unique back-to-backs at different venues that you don't see. Do not sleep on Miami Music Week. It's so much fun. I was super blessed this past year that my company was putting on so many different shows because it just allowed me to see a whole new side of Miami during that week. You know, I hadn't done Miami Music Week before. So definitely wait and see what lineups come out. Buying tickets is tricky with Miami Music Week because you'll see a party that you really wanna go to, you'll buy tickets, and then another show gets announced the same night at a different venue. That's like something you wanna go to even more. But at the same time, the longer you wait, the more ticket prices go up. So it's really tricky, so definitely pick ones early on that you are like so dead set on going to and lock in the low ticket tier prices but just know that a lot of things get announced on the same night so you're definitely gonna have to pick and choose which ones you want to go to the most number three the heat during the day at this festival exhausts you way more than you think so it's really important that you're drinking water all throughout the day i know the first time i went i didn't really think that much of it i was like i don't feel that overheated so i wasn't drinking that much water almost fainted at one point it was not a good look okay don't do that don't do that please drink electrolytes where you can i drink liquid iv every time i go to festivals that really helps and i highly recommend just bringing a hydration pack i know not everyone likes hydration packs but you got to be drinking your water okay i am a little biased i'm gonna recommend lunchbox packs because not only do they hold two liters of water, but they are also anti-theft, which I will be talking about this in a later point, but the pickpocketing at Ultra is a real problem and you do not wanna get your phone stolen. So 
If there's any product you should invest in for this festival, it is a lunchbox. They keep all of your shit safe. They keep you hydrated, okay? Like, it's the most important thing. If you're gonna take anything away from this video, it should probably be that. <laughs> Safety is important, okay? You need to stay hydrated. Go buy a lunchbox. I do have a discount code if you would like to use it. It's BB and it will give you $10 off of the pack. So I'll have a link down below as well if you wanna go buy that. Fourth very important point is to wear sunscreen. Again, this kind of ties into the last point of you really underestimate the sun and the heat while you're there. This past year even, I accidentally got really sunburnt on the first day. Don't sleep on the SPF, okay? It's important. You don't want to have sunburn for the rest of the weekend. It's so uncomfortable at a festival. It's just not, not fun. So... Do not forget sunscreen. Another thing not to forget, and that is point number five, is please do not forget earplugs. My first Ultra, all I had were like the shitty little foam ones, and honestly, that is fine if they're in your ear all the way because that protects your hearing. But like my first Ultra, I had those, but I wasn't wearing them at all times. It doesn't matter if it's main stage at 10 p.m. or a smaller stage earlier in the day. You need to be wearing earplugs all day. The sound is very loud, it damages your hearing more than you think, and it's something you should really take seriously. So if you don't have earplugs, of course, again, you can go buy those foam ones at any drugstore usually has them, but I highly recommend if you're a music nerd like me as well and you really want to hear it and not have it muffled by those, invest in a pair of high fidelity earplugs. I recommend Eargasm. I also have a discount code with them if you're interested. If you need a new pair, I will have the link down below, but it's also just code BB. It'll give you a discount. This is a loud ass festival. It's just so like if you take out an earplug at main stage that late in the night, you're like so damaging. It's horrible. Please take it seriously. I feel like a mom right now. I'm like, please protect your hearing babies. Okay, please, because you will go deaf. You will. Number six, do not stay at main stage all weekend. I was very guilty of this the first time I went, although I did divide my time. Well, I just went back and forth between three stages, main stage worldwide and the live stage. Go elsewhere, go do other things. Please spend time at resistance. Even if you don't think you're like a huge techno person, don't sleep on resistance go see carl cox especially it'll change your whole view okay i promise like i know so many people who are not into techno and then they go to resistance and they're like oh and i'm like yeah the lineup at resistance is always insane the sets are insane the production last year they had things like moving hanging from the ceiling of the whole structure it was insane please don't skip out on resistance. Point number seven is that the crowd at Ultra is not the nicest ever, so just be prepared for a lack of crowd etiquette, but a lot of it mostly is at main stage. So if you're staying at main stage all weekend, you're gonna run into these issues, but if you're going to the smaller stages, if you're going to resistance, it's a little bit less annoying, but definitely be prepared for some shoving without saying excuse me. Um, there's a lot of pickpocketing at this festival, which goes back to you should buy a lunchbox so that your phone is safe and you're hydrated all weekend long. But please make sure your phone is secure. Keep checking for your phone and your wallet and your ID just at all times because people will be swiping at this festival the pickpocketing is no joke here so be prepared for that but yeah there's just not like it's not that the crowd is absolutely horrible it's just that i think a lot of people go into it expecting the typical american like plur eh, and it, mm, that's not ultra babe and it's not it's a weird mix of people also that's an important point like you could have anything from college kids like florida college kids to international visitors who are like in their 60s it's crazy it's one of the most age diverse crowds i've seen is ultra but a lot of people are just getting real fucked up don't have a lot of control over their bodies and are really messy and annoying and just don't have basic manners it's that's ultra that's just the crowd and you're gonna have to probably deal with that at some point or another during your weekend. Number eight, the cell service here is hit or miss. So if you have certain sets that you wanna hit up with your group, definitely have your meetup spots prepared before you get into the festival grounds, um, time and place, because you just never know. Sometimes I would have good service, sometimes I wouldn't have service for hours. 
it sucks so definitely be prepared if you want to do meetup spots just pick them and the times before you even get in number nine the lines to get into the festival get extremely extremely long as the day goes on so i highly recommend getting there as early as possible i know it's hard on you know the days where you're getting ready after a miami music week party or you're like too tired from the day before but I know people who have waited in line for two plus hours who get there more around like 6 p.m. Like around that time, the lines just get crazy. It's not worth it. Try and get there early. You will thank yourself later on. The last thing you want is to be stuck in a security line for two fucking hours in the heat. It's just a no. So be prepared. Try and get there early. Last point is to make sure you have the Ultra app downloaded on your phone. Not only is it useful for planning your set schedule, who you want to see, kind of mapping out your days, but they also make announcements through the app and that means surprise sets sometimes get announced through the app. So definitely have that on your phone and you'll get and have the push notifications on and then you'll be able to stay in the loop with anything that's happening. Also just a good protocol to follow for any festival just because they put out safety announcements as push notifications. So I'm always telling people whatever festival you go to, make sure you have the app and you have the push notice on because you just never know. But it is very useful for surprise sets and other cool announcements that they put out. Well, you guys, those are my 10 tips for attending Ultra for the first time. If you have any questions about the festival, please feel free to leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer. Um, I think this year is going to be great. The lineup looks sick. Swedish House Mafia is closing, if I remember correctly, so that will be dope. And I hope you all have a wonderful time. Like I said, I don't know if I will be there yet. It's still to be decided through work. I would not mind going again for media. I thought it was a really fun experience. So we will see. We will see what I end up doing, but I hope you guys found this video helpful. Again, subscribe to stay tuned with all my festival content. I'll have lots more coming and yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.